things are possible to him who can believe. You were born to give birth to something that is impossible. Every one of us are unique. No one of us has the same fingerprint. God does not create the same thing. No star has the same fingerprint. Everything is different because God has created all of us to have an expression of something that is impossible. I want to attack an area. I, I, I want to attack a lie. Now, I heard something that was a little alarming, and so I'm going to deal with it. But when I attack it, it it's, it's going to stream in, out in every area of your life that, that the, the devil is lying to you about. That the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is becoming beggars. We don't know how to make it. We don't even know how to survive. And so we, we have postured ourselves to be in a position to be begging. But the Bible says that David was once a young man. He said, I was once a young man. He says, I'm old now, but never have I ever seen the righteous forsaken or his seed to be begging bread. It is not in the heart of your father that the church of Jesus Christ or a believer should ever have to beg for anything. And so, you know, I realize that we've got to attack this area of everywhere the enemy tries to lie to us so that we won't absorb those lies and start to live in it. As a matter of fact, huh, anything that does not line up with this word, it's a lie where you and I are concerned. Amen. And he's been telling a bunch of lies. Like one of the lies, like, like you can't get a job. Can't nobody keep you out of having a job. That don't even exist. Do you know that's one of the biggest lies on the planet? That you can't find a place of employment. That's to say that God, who created the heavens and the universe who put the stars in the heaven, who put the sun and the moon up there. Then the sun and the moon never falls down and hits the earth. And the earth never falls out the sky. It's to say that that same God who's created all of these things have not had enough thought where you're concerned for your welfare to turn out to be good. It's a lie. And so this morning, I want to talk to you about disciples of the kingdom. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it reads, or it says that we have been delivered from the power of darkness. Shout, I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Say it again. I've been delivered. I've been delivered. Now notice, you're not being delivered, that you have been delivered from the power of darkness. And you've been translated, the Bible says, into the kingdom of his dear son. So the Bible says that you and I have been translated. Translation means to go from one state of being to another state of being. Are you hearing me? So now when I was living and born in this kingdom of darkness, when God delivered me and then translated me from this state of being to now this state of being that I'm in today. So I went from darkness to light. I, I, I went from sickness to health. I went from the tail to the head. I went from the bottom to above. Do you understand? See, it, you go from blind to now you can see. You go from deaf to now you can hear. You go from lame to now you can walk. You, you go from what's impossible to now all things are possible to him who can believe. In this kingdom, all things, somebody shout all things, are possible. 
then the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, that we are citizens of the kingdom. And we are of the household of God. Shout, I'm a citizen. Now, a citizen of the kingdom is, is called a disciple. You have citizenship in two worlds. But your citizenship in the kingdom is called a disciple. Your citizenship in the United States calls you a, an American. We, we are an American because we have a citizenship in the United States. But we have citizenship in his kingdom, and that citizenship says that you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, that our citizenship is from heaven. And it says in John 17, verse 14, that you and I are not of this world. Amen. Look at your neighbor says, you're not of this world. Now, John says that you're in this world, but you're not of this world. So now, I've got to get you to start thinking like people that are not of this world. Because as long as you're thinking that you're of this world, then you're subject to this world. See, when, when the United States establishes in another country, they establish their ambas, embassy in, in, a, in the, the U.S. embassy in another country. They're in that world or in that country, but they're not of that country. Even though they're in that country, they're not of that country. They don't think like that country. They don't live by the means of that country. There's nothing going on in that country that controls them because even though they're stationed in that country, they're not of that country. Their supply comes from the United States. Their, their, their power, any resource from life comes from the country that they're a citizen of. Citizenship gives you privileges. That's why when you try to join this country from another nation, they make you work very hard because they want to determine whether or not you are worthy enough or for them to bestow on you the citizenship in this country and all that goes along with it. Any nation. Well, the day that you made Jesus the Lord of your life, not only did he deliver you from the power of darkness, but he translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. You became a citizenship with full privileges of what heaven has to offer. So it doesn't matter what it looks like here. It does not stop your citizenship from there. God fully in term and fully in he fully believes fully desires for you to live from your heavenly citizenship while you're here. That's why when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said for them to pray, thou kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Live by your heavenly citizenship. Know you in the earth, but God wants you to live by heaven's resources for your life. In Ephesians 2 verse 6 says that we are seated in, in heavenly places, that, that we get our authority, we, we get our, our power, and everything that we're able to do in this world comes from the seat of authority comes from the place of power that God has allowed us to have as a citizen of his kingdom. God. He intends for us to take every favor, every blessing, every tool that we have a right to and use it to influence and to affect the life of humanity that we live on this earth. He wants to use your favor to be favor mankind. He wants to use your power, your resources, your relationship, your status, who you are, your seat of authority to affect the landscape of humanity. 
to change the course of history where mankind lives. He wants you to use those abilities to attack things that are impossible and change impossible odds into people's favor. He wants to use you because he takes pleasure and he's made a decision that he will do what he's going to do on earth through you. And God enjoys that when mankind begins to recognize you and him as one. He enjoys the idea of that the world begins to identify us with him. He is like a father so excited that you go to a game and you see your child playing and they do something in the game. You, you're the first to let everybody know, that's my baby. Well, God has chosen to do things in the earth, but he's chosen to do them through you so that the world may know. And identify you and I with him. That's what your citizenship brings you. It brings you manifestations from another world. It brings you a reality that is invisible to natural man, but not invisible to a man or woman who's now a citizen of that world. It's the citizenship that allows you to enjoy living on the earth. The joy of living in the earth is that I'm a citizen of another world. The joy of being here is I've been delivered from darkness. The joy of being here is that I don't have to live under the defeated foe, the, the falling humanity. The joy of it is that, that Jesus absorbed all those things for me, giving me a different life. The joy of it that I have a different state of being. I'm not living as a foster child. I'm not living under what happened to man in the garden. I'm living on what happened to man at the cross. I have been translated. I am a disciple, a citizen of another world. Living in full privilege out in the open where all of humanity can see. I'm a citizen of another world where the blind get to see and the lame get to walk and the deaf get to hear and the dead get raised and the gospel is preached to the unfortunate. I'm a citizen of that world. Privilege. Called. Chosen. To manifest that reality in this place. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12 verse 32. That God takes pleasure. Or it is his good pleasure to give you this kingdom. He's pleased to give that to you. He's given you this kingdom. And then in Psalms 103 verse 19. The Bible says... His kingdom rules over all. Hear, hear me now. His kingdom rules over all, and it is God's good pleasure to give you that. He, your citizenship, have given you a kingdom that rules over all. It's given you an identity. It's given you a status in life. It's given you a seat from that world to this world. That you're not the under ruler, but you are a ruler in life. It's caused you to be the head and not to tell. It's caused you to be above and not beneath. It's caused you to win and not lose. The words you speak are important and have power. If those words are any negative words, such as gossiping, complaining, or backbiting, they will set atmospheres of destruction, defeat, and failure. If those words are God's words, they will set atmospheres of grace, peace, and blessing. As a born-again believer created in the image and likeness of God, you have the ability to set the atmosphere around you through the words you speak. In this series, The Weight of Your Words, Cynthia Brazelton explains how to choose life and blessings in every area of your life. Choose life today by applying these biblical principles into your daily words. This citizenship empowers the church when we begin to live as citizens from another world. 
We know what it's like to live as a citizen here. But what we're learning is how to live from a heavenly citizenship. And when we do that, the Bible term for that is you are a disciple. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a disciple. And since his kingdom ruleth over all, we rule by faith. Somebody say, by faith. So our lives as a disciple or as a citizen of that world is released into this world as we walk by faith and not by sight. See, the lifestyle of a citizen from there, his lifestyle is the lifestyle of faith. It is a lifestyle that he believes God. His power is released because he he believes God. So what are some of the signs of what a disciple looks like? What does a citizen look like from that world? Go to Luke chapter 14. Oh, I'm going to help you in a minute. See, it's going to address some issues in a minute. You're going to be saying, thank you. Let's look at some signs of what this citizenship looked like. Oh, are you there? In Luke 14, verse 26, Jesus said, if any man come after me, if any man come to me, and he hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sister, yea, in his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Did you see that? Jesus said a disciple makes a total commitment. In other words, let me say it to you this. Here's what a disciple looks like to God. A disciple doesn't put anything ahead of God. That's all he's saying. You know that you are a, a disciple. You know that you're living by your heavenly citizenship when you have nothing ahead of God, not even your own life. See, here's the danger is that here's, here's how the enemy has tricked us and lied to us. He, he has got us unintentionally, but intentionally crafting our own Christianity. We are now deciding what we will do and won't do. But here's, here's what a disciple looks like. Here's what a citizen looks like. A citizen does not put anything above. God. Not even his own comfort. In other words, I'm not going to sit home today and watch it on TV because I'm tired. That's your comfort above. See, you're crafting your own Christianity, and yet you want to see the fruit of your citizenship. I'm going to help you in a minute. Because here's what we're attacking. We're attacking a lie, not you, the lie. You're not the problem. It's a lie we're going after. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to raise you. I'm here to empower you. I'm here to lift you up. Because if you will allow God to attack this lie, you're going to leave here containing and carrying all of what God has promised you. Do you know what people who can carry the promises of God, see his promises manifest? That's people that we would term in the New Testament as disciples of Jesus. A disciple is one. That can manifest God's promises. Listen, what he said to you in in 2 Peter, he says that God uses divine power to give you all things. He's not left out anything. To give you all things that pertain to life and God-likeness, the very likeness of him. has He used his power so you would be like him. Tell your neighbor, I'm like God. (laughs) Now, he's not talking about like God in the flesh. He's talking about like God in your spirit. See, God is a spirit, and you are a spirit living in a body. And he's already used his power to make you like him. Dang, I love that. He uses power to give you life. 
And then he says, he's always, he's uses power to give you these exceeding great and precious promises that by these, you and I begin to partake of the divine nature. We get to partake of, of, of life outside of flesh and blood. We get to live in realms that are, that are impossible with natural men, but not impossible with men that, that are citizens of another world. God wants you to experience life on his terms, so he uses his power to release to you the very life that he lives. He uses power so you can be in his likeness and live like and walk like him and do what he does in the earth. He's given you the promise that allows me to, to live a divine life in a failing world. have that ability. That's what you have. That's what we look like as a citizen. You look different because you are different. That's why he said you're not of the world. You're in it but that you're not of it. So all of its harsh realities you're not subject to. All of its weaknesses, all of its failures, all of its lies and disease that come along. You're not subject to it because I'm here but I'm not of it. Why? My life partakes of the supernatural. It partakes of his life of the divine. That's what, the, that's what a citizen looks like from that world. He's got a divine life. Hey. Whew. He got a life like God. Let me tell you something. Boy, you look like God. Everybody want to marry you. You won't have a problem getting married. You might have to run off a lot of them. But notice what this, what this life looks like. It's a life that has set priorities. And here's the priority. Nothing is ahead of God. Not even my own personal affairs, my own personal wants, my own personal desires. It's not. And that's the same life that Jesus had. I don't do anything that I haven't first seen my father do. See, he didn't put his own self ahead of God. So he's showing you that that's the divine life. That's the life you called. That's what these citizens look like. See, see, see it, it happens all the time. Well, I need to work. I need to get, it, I need to get more money. See, now, now, you've put your life, this physical life, ahead of what God has used his power to give you a life. Let me tell you something. If God give you a life, you don't take it, then you have to take the life that you're crafting out. If he's already produced the resources for every one of your needs, and you run out and go work to get that need met when he's already produced it for you, then you're never going to see that. Do you realize if God speaks to me and tell me to meet your need, and I, I'm, tell me to give you something, and you go out and get it yourself, you're never going to get it. Why? Because you met the need. I'm talking about the divine light. I'm talking about living as a citizen of another world and attacking a lie that you are, you are, you are something less than that. Let's see some more signs of what a disciple looks like. John 13, verse 35, he says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. All men will know. All men. God wants all men to know what? That you are my disciple. That you are a citizen of another world. That you're in this world, but you're not of it. I want all men to know there's something different about you. I want all men to know what? How will they know that you're my disciple? They will know if you have love one to another. Look at me. Love one to another. So one of the signs that we have accept our citizenship from another world is that the love that we have one for another. See, the world will know, uh, uh, you, you strange, you different, you, you love people. <laughs> See, the world only love who people love them. 
but a, a citizen of the, of the world. We love. And when we don't just love, but we love one another. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you. John 15, verse 8 is another sign of a citizen of this, of this, this, this world called kingdom. John 15, verse 8, he says, Herein is my Father glorified. How is God glorified? That you bear much fruit. God gets glory when you're fruitful. But not that not you, you're producing small amounts. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm glorified when you are you're so productive that your productivity produces a lot. That you bear much fruit. Watch this. And so shall you be my disciple. So shall you be. So shall you be. Be what? My disciple. What is a disciple? He bears much fruit. So can, you can see for you to say, well, I don't have a job. I can't do this. I don't have that. that whoa, 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 whoa. What citizenship are you living by? Do you understand? I, I don't know. I don't. I try to give me a job. I want to. I want to hire me. I want to. Wait a minute. What? Whose citizen are you? Well, I hear you preaching, but I tried. I went on the internet and, and I put out a thousand, and nobody hired me. Cut. You still don't know who you are. You're trying to live by the the citizenship of this world, without realizing that you've been delivered from here. Remember, it's God's good pleasure to give you his kingdom. And his kingdom ruleth over all. It rules in every affair of mankind. <clears throat> Who told you you can't have a job? Who told you that you can't? Who told you? Who said that to you? It didn't come from your citizenship from heaven. So now, how can I tell you you're living in your citizenship? You're fruitful. I know you are in the game. What? You're fruitful. You, you're in the game. If you're in the game, you're fruitful. Every believer living as a disciple of Jesus Christ, every believer who is of the household of God, every believer who believes, Next week on Victory Today. But notice those that believe in him wasn't necessarily a disciple. He said to the ones that believe, if you continue, if you abide in my word, then will you be my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Free of what? A lie. Every lie the enemy has told us. You will be free when you begin to go beyond just being a believer. Join us again for Victory Today with Tony and Cynthia Brazelton. And remember 1 John 4, 17. As Jesus is, so are we in this world.